Hi, Yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Now, today's video is crochet pattern number three in our year long scrap happy crochet along. Each month, we're making a new pattern to use up some of our leftover yarns. Now, today we're making a scrap happy blanket with a foot pocket. And you don't have to add the foot pocket if you don't want to. It still makes a really nice blanket. Now you'll notice these are all what we call blanket yarns that I had left over from other projects where I had a half a skein or a skein or a skein and a half and they're all different colors. Some of them are variegated, some of them are solids but they're all super bulky number six yarns. And that's what we're going to use today. Now, if you don't have a bunch of leftover blanket yarns, and your blanket yarns are the ones that are soft and fuzzy and thick, you can use any super bulky number six yarns. And we'll talk a little more about yarns in just a minute. Now, if you make the blanket according to the pattern that I have written, it'll be about 36 inches wide and about 56 inches long. So it's a really nice size blanket. But if you want to make it smaller, shorter, longer, wider, all of those um, multiples and stitch counts are on the blog. And as always, you'll find that blog link down in those notes underneath this video. To make our scrap happy foot pocket blanket, you're going to need super bulky number six blanket yarns. And here's a couple examples of what I used. Here's a baby blanket. You can see that fuzziness. This is your basic burnet blanket. Same thing, fuzzy. This is a red heart sweet home blanket yarn. And again, they're all super bulky number six yarns. Now, if you don't have some of these yarns, let me move them out of the way. There's a couple other options that you can use. Here's one that is a super bulky number six, and this is called Wool Ease Thick and Quick by Lion Brand. This works great for this project. Another one from Lion Brand is the Hometown USA. This makes a lot heavier of a blanket because it is a heavier yarn. As far as just holding it, you can feel that it's heavier. And it is a super bulky number six as well. One thing to keep in mind though, when you're making a big blanket like this, you want to use the same fiber for the entire blanket. All right. Now this is... 100% acrylic, so it would work okay with our blanket yarn because our blanket yarn is also 100% acrylic. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your yarns. And there are lots of other yarns that are super bulky number six yarns. Now, let's say you don't have any super bulky number six yarns, but you still want to make a big blanket like this. You can use three strands of a medium weight number four or even four strands of a medium weight number four yarn, depending on the medium weight number four yarn that you choose. Because remember, some medium weight number four yarns are a little thicker than others. So keep that in mind. And it's okay if you've done that and you want to use three or four and the pattern, you know, the blanket might come out a little smaller or a little bigger. That's okay. Just remember to measure as you go and do as many rows as needed for the size that you need. You'll want to keep that tape measure close by so that you can make it the size that you need. And when it comes to making blankets like this, we do have a little wiggle room in size. All right. So we're going to be stitching today with our end hook. And our end hook that we're using today is a 10.0 millimeter crochet hook. Now I wanted to talk about this because we have an end hook that is a nine millimeter also. 
but we're using the 10 millimeter crochet hook for this project today. And then of course you're going to need a pair of scissors. Now I'm also going to show you how to bring in a new color with this type of yarn and how to weave it in securely. It's a little bit different than just a medium weight number four or, or a light three or something because you don't have the ability to go through the fibers. And so we're going to do it just a little different, but it's not hard. It'll be super easy. All right, let's get started. I've got my bulky number six blanket yarn and my N 10 millimeter crochet hook. We're going to begin with a slip knot and we're going to chain 69 chains. Now I'm not going to be making a whole nother blanket. I'm going to do a swatch. And so my swatch is going to be 21 chains. But for this blanket, you need to stitch 69 chains. And something I do recommend is when you do a long chain like this, that you use some stitch markers to mark your stitches. So what I would do is chain 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I would put that stitch marker in to mark that 10th stitch. Then I don't have to keep recounting to make sure I have the right amount. Once I complete it, I will count all of them again, of course. All right, so you need to chain and remember, the initial chain needs to be a little bit loose. You need to chain 69 chains. I'm going to be chaining 21 because I'm just making a swatch. I have chained my 21. You can see I have 10 and 10 and then 1. Now, you, remember, you need to have 69 chains. All right, so I'll go ahead and take out my stitch markers. And for the first row of our blanket, we're going to begin by stitching a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. We don't count the loop on our hook. One, two, three, four. So yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over, and go through the second two. Let's get some more yarn out here. There we go. All right, and so what you're going to do for our first row, after you've done the initial double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. Your chain three counts as your first and then you stitch that one. And now we're just going to stitch one double crochet in each of those chains across. And as you stitch this, you'll see this is going to work up rather quickly. That's another really cool thing about working with blanket and super bulky yarns. All right, so we'll just stitch one double crochet in each of those chains across. I have placed a double crochet in each of my chains across. And remember, we started in the fourth chain from the hook and those first three chains count as our first stitch. So you're going to need to have 67 double crochets. I have 19 because I started with a swatch of 21. You started with 69 chains and you should have 67 double crochets. We're going to chain three. And turn our work. Now for row two, we're going to begin those open spaces. And I know a lot of people, when you're making a big heavy blanket, they ask, why do I leave open spaces? And it's that is really important because you need to have air circulation, okay? And when you're working with these big heavy yarns, they can be very heavy. If you do not want to have those open spaces, you can stitch this up as a solid blanket. But I like those open spaces. It's more comfortable for me and for the others that I have made these for. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next two double crochet stitches. Our chain three counts as our first, and so we'll place one double crochet in the next two. Chain three, 
then we'll chain one we'll skip this next double crochet and double crochet in the next two stitches And then we'll repeat this across. Chain one, skip the next, and one double crochet in the next two. Chain one, skip the next, and double crochet in the next two. And you'll repeat this working all the way across until you reach those last four stitches. And of course, you'll have a lot more stitches than I do. All right, but for my swatch, you can see where we, we have our three at the beginning because our chain three counts as one. Then we chained one, skipped one, one double crochet in the next two, and repeated this across until we reach those last four stitches. When you reach the end of your row, you're going to chain one, skip the next, and then one double crochet in the last three stitches. And chain three. And of course, you'll have a lot more stitches than I do through the middle, but this is the way that row two should look. We have our chain three that counts as one and then two more double crochets. Chain one, skip one, our two double crochets, one in each of the next two. And then we repeat that across until we reach those last four stitches. We chain one, skip one, and then one double crochet in the last three. You're going to still have 67 stitches on each row. The difference is on our open rows, those chain ones in between those two sets of two double crochets. Now for row three, we're going to stitch another row of solid double crochets. So we have our chain three, we're going to turn. Our chain three will count as the first double crochet on every row. So we'll double crochet in those next two double crochets. We'll double crochet in the chain one space, double crochet in the next two double crochets, and double crochet in the chain one space. And so we're making a solid row of double crochets. And we'll repeat this all the way across our row. Double crochet in the chain one space, double crochet in the two double crochets. And again, you can see how quickly this blanket is going to stitch up. All right, so I stitched in that last chain one space. Now I'm going to stitch one double crochet in those last three. And again, you're going to have 67 double crochet stitches. Your stitch count on each row will remain the same. All right, chain three. And of course, this is a swatch, so I don't have as many stitches. I only have 19. All right, and so that's the way that row three is. All right, let's do row four. We've chained three. We're going to turn our work. Our chain three counts is our first stitch. So we'll stitch one double crochet in the next two. We'll chain one, skip one, and one double crochet in the next two stitches. And so what we're doing here is repeating row two.
chain one, skip one, one double crochet in the next two all the way across our row. And then again, when you get to those last four stitches, chain one, skip the next, and one double crochet in the last three. And chain three. So what we did for row four is we just repeated what we did on row two. And so now what we're going to do for row five is we're just going to repeat what we did on row three. So we chain three, turn our work, one double crochet in the next two, because again, our chain three counts as our first. One double crochet in the chain one spaces and one double crochet in the next two double crochets. And we'll just continue to repeat this across, stitching one double crochet in each of the double crochets and one double crochet in the chain one spaces and we'll repeat that all the way across for row five. And so this is how row five should look. And of course, again, you're going to have a much wider blanket than mine. I'm working on a swatch, but you're going to have a solid row of double crochets and you should have 67 double crochets. Like I said, you'll have the same number of stitches on every row. Now, before we go on, I want to talk to you a little bit about how to change colors. And so I'm going to show you two different things that you can do. The first thing you can do is only change colors on the end. And so all you would do is bring in, let me go ahead and cut this just to get that out of the way. You'd bring in your next color, do your chain three after your color change, turn your work, and then stitch over those tails of yarn. Now, I usually tell you to stitch over them and then come back and weave those in. Well, with this type of blanket yarn, it's a little bit difficult. All right? But we want a nice clean finish, right? So what I do is I'll grab the biggest needle that I have and I'll thread those ends on individually. Wrap it over the needle and ease it in there. Okay, and then you can weave it in and I'll go down into the stitch. Trying to stay within the same color of yarn that I used and go back and forth. You cannot go through the fibers of the yarn with blanket yarn like this because it just doesn't work. All right, and that's how I would weave those in. Now, let's say, because I like to just add my yarn in wherever it happens okay so on this row would be a chain one let me pull a little bit of yarn out of here and then we would go to skip the next stitch two three and then double crochet in the next two all right so here's two this is awful little i'm just going to show you how to do this Okay, so now let's say I go to my next stitch and I stitch my double crochet, but I'm running out of yarn. Okay, let's go ahead and clip that. Before you finish your, um, try to change your color on a double crochet stitch first. Okay, and then before you finish your double crochet, whether it's your first one or your second one or wherever, bring in that next color of yarn. That way you get a complete stitch of that color all right and then you can stitch your next color going over those tails of yarn and then come back in and weave this in the same way as i did over here you need to leave a little bit longer tail of yarn than i did there but again get the biggest needle that you can find wrap that over and ease that in and then weave this in, trying to go in the color, going through the stitch, 
back and forth. And I do suggest, this, this one is way too short. I do suggest leaving a long tail so that you can weave that in properly because this is a blanket it's going to go through the wash and you want those ends to stay in place all right so that's two ways that you can bring in your yarn you can do it at the beginning or ending of a row or you can do it in the middle both ways are fine i like doing it with just wherever the yarn ends okay so now we've stitched five rows and again I'm working off a swatch not the blanket and you're going to have 67 stitches on each row and if you're making the pattern according to what I have written you're going to continue to repeat row two and row three the open row and the closed row for 49 more rows alternating the rows like we did here you'll do an open row a closed row open row closed row for an additional 49 more rows, alternating those rows. Once you have stitched those additional 49 rows or more, and your blanket is the length that you need. Now, something to keep in mind is the length of this is set up for someone to sit on the couch or in a chair and when we fold that end up to put, have room to put their feet inside for the foot pocket if you're making this say for a taller man or woman that um, has maybe longer legs and you want to make it longer you certainly can so once you've done the amount of rows that you need we're going to put an even row of double crochets around all four sides of our blanket all right, so we have our chain three here. We're going to stitch two more double crochets in this corner. And again, I'm working off a swatch. And now we're going to evenly double crochet down the side of our blanket. And the best way to keep this looking nice and neat is to stitch in the sides of those stitches and not the holes if you can help it there's not a set number of stitches that you need you just need to stitch it so that it looks nice and neat and the stitches aren't too far apart and aren't too close together you don't want it rippling and you don't want it puckering up okay so I'm just gonna work down here since I'm working off a swatch trying to stitch in the sides of the stitches And when you get up to these bigger crochet hook sizes, the end of your crochet hook is more rounded, and so that can be a little bit difficult in getting it in the sides of these stitches. So just take your time, look at it, see how it's laying, if it's laying nice and pretty. All right. <clears throat> now when we get to the bottom, reaching that next corner, you're going to place three double crochets in that corner and that's just going to help it move smoothly around the corner and you'll have a nice edge on that corner and that brings you to the bottom and this is where we did our initial chains and so you can stitch your stitches in those chain stitches and so what you're going to do for this row is you're going to evenly double crochet around all four sides of your blanket stitching three double crochets in each of those four corners and then when you get back over here we're going to join back to our chain three so now I have my actual blanket that I have made not my swatch here's where I joined here's my three double crochets here's where I joined and now I have cut off my yarn and I'm going to weave that in trying to stay in those stitches I remember to leave just a little bit longer tail of yarn this time <clears throat> and I want to make sure that it's going to stay put I don't want it to come undone so I'm pulling it just a little snugly 
And if you don't want to make the pocket for the foot pocket, you don't have to. This makes a nice, warm, cuddly blanket. It's a great blanket to take along with you in the car. If you like uh, to take road trips up in the mountains like we do, it's nice to have a blanket for me and the dogs in the car. All right, so that's all tidied up. And now I have this nice, big, beautiful, snuggly blanket with all these crazy colors, and I absolutely love it. But how do we make a blanket into a foot pocket blanket? So here's my blanket. Now you want to lay it out long wise and decide which end you want to put your pocket on. And so what I do is I measure it 10 inches. That makes a nice size pocket. Now, if you're making this maybe for a child and you're making it smaller, you can go down to eight inches. If you're making this for say a lady or gentleman that has bigger feet, or maybe just wants a little bit more room, you can bring that up and make that pocket bigger. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it about 10 inches, and then on the ends, we're going to stitch those closed. So I used one of my bigger needles so that I can pin that in place and I'm going to stitch the edge of this together with slip stitches. Now I'm going to show you with this light blue yarn. And so what you'll do is you'll go in, there we go, in those first two stitches. Leave yourself a good amount of yarn tail so we can weave that in. And I chose this light blue so you could see what I'm doing. Um, I'll probably go back in and use either the brown or the cranberry, just so it looks a little neater. But I chose to use this light blue so that you could see. All right, so move this around. You're gonna go in the next stitch and stitch a slip stitch. And all that is is you go in Pull the loop through, then pull that loop through the loop on your hook. Now, don't stitch this too snugly that it pulls because you don't want that to pull. You want it to be a nice, even row so it looks like a braid going up the side of your blanket. And you'll just repeat this until you've reached up here at the top where you pinned it. So I stitched all the way up, stitching where we folded it up on the side. I made that nice braid across there. It looks nice and pretty. And now we're going to weave this in. I'm gonna give myself quite a bit of yarn, about 10 inches there, or eight, because this is the corner of our pocket and it's gonna get a lot of wear and tear. So we wanna make sure that we weave that in good. All right, so I'm gonna put that on there. I'm gonna go through this a couple more times just to make sure I've got a good, solid corner on my pocket. You can see I did that four times because again, that's where it gets pulled is those corners of the pocket. And then I'm going to weave this in, but I'm gonna get in there. I'm gonna to go to the inside of that pocket <clears throat> and weave that in in sort of a loop fashion. So I'm looping it up and then I'm going to go back up. I want it to really be attached well. And I, you can see I'm using that new, to me, curved needle. It works really good for this project. I'm gonna give it a good hard pull and then cut it. And so that corner is going to stay put if it gets pulled on. And then I'll do the same thing down here and weave this one in. And then of course, we need to do the same thing on the other side of our blanket. So I've stitched both of the sides of my foot pocket on my blanket 
and I've got lots of room for my snuggly feet. Now, one thing that might happen if you have a really wide blanket is that the middle of the blanket might droop. And what you can do is just add a few stay stitches to keep it put so it doesn't droop. And you just thread on some yarn that's matching and make a few stitches to keep it from drooping. I like this one the way it is. I don't, I don't mind a little bit of drooping. I like to be able to have room for my feet, maybe a book or a crochet project. <laughs> I love this blanket. And I know I'm always saying I'm going to keep my project, but I am. I'm going to keep this one. It's a great travel blanket. It's great to have with you in the car and snuggle your feet in it, as well as in your recliner at home. So that's our pattern and video number three for our scrap happy blanket with a foot pocket to keep your toes toasty and warm.